welcome everyone and I will begin today by acknowledging the Wadjandari people, traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples here today. Welcome everyone to the Adobe workshop series. So today will be the first workshop of the series and we will be teaching you the basics as well as some tips and tricks of Adobe Illustrator. So a quick introduction of myself. As I said before, I am Crystal, the president of Archaico and the host of today's workshop together with Angela. Today's Google Drive folder link, which contains all the assets that Alicia has collated for today's workshop. Um, I think, I believe it's just an image, but the link is here. Take note, anything we say or teach today does not directly apply as advice or suggestions to your studio teachings and assignments. So in this case, please listen to your teacher or ask them first before applying any new knowledge or techniques taken from today's workshop. So our instructor today is Alicia. She is currently a third year undergraduate at the University of Melbourne and also our club education officer. I will now hand it over to Alicia. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, I think first up, maybe um, I'll just show like some of the stuff, like some work that I've done through Illustrator, just so you know, like the scope of what you can do to preface that I'm not a professional. I'm just a student like all of you. So um, I just use Illustrator sometimes for fun. I just, you can do very simple vector drawings like these. This is also done on Illustrator. Um, and other drawings like, stuff this was not for uni um but uni related this was done on illustrator um mixed a bit with photoshop so that is what you can do that's what you're going to learn next week if you join us as well um and yeah a lot of line leads and whatnot <clears throat> can be done on um, illustrator as well so that's like what i use illustrator for and um me and I hope everyone has their illustrator popped up. Um, if you haven't now, it's a good time to open up your illustrator and um and yeah, and download the file that is in the link in the chat um or through the email. You would just start with I'll I'll just oh just an overview. I'll teach you how to like open a new file, um, reorganizing like the workspace, teach you some shortcuts like hotkeys and like common tools and then we'll get into like designing the logo so if you create new um, a new document page will pop up you might not have any reasons if you've never used it before for some of you um, but as you go along your reasons will too late so things like if common things like a4 sizes and um, other things that a3 sizes that you use a lot would pop up but otherwise there are other presets that pop up here. So like mobile is where your iPhone, iPad sizes, canvases will pop up, web pages, print. So A4 letter, large print and whatnot. And then, yeah, and other things that you probably won't touch, I don't think. I think the most common would be you using this side um, as a, if you're doing architecture or usually during design studio, if you're doing like FODR, foundation of representation, design representation, they would like want you to like memorize um, the sizes. So there's like A4 sizes. It's, this is the width and the height. You can change your units here. At bots, I can explain later. Um, bleed is not too important. It's just for like printing purposes. So if you increase this, um, there's like a margin that will pop up when you open with, on your canvas that would help you like measure certain things, but that's not too important today. Um, color mode under advanced options is quite important um, in the sense that RGB color is for more for digital design. So if you are to just do like, um, just say you're doing your assignment and it's a digital, digitally submitted, you will normally just use RGB. Um, 
and CMYK, which is the cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, that is more for printing. So that's the colors that the printers use to print your work. So say if you know that you have to print this out um, for like a presentation, you will want to change it to CMYK. But for now, since we're doing digitally, um, RGB will work. Rasterizing, um, so this is not too important for Illustrator because Illustrator is a vector software. I can explain that later, but like Photoshop is more for rastering and it's like the dots, the pixels per inch. So that would be um, a different use. So for now you can just leave it as whatever. And then you can just create and you're done. That is setting up your page. So this should be an A4 size. That was what I inputted. Um, hopefully you guys managed to catch like the sizing. Um, otherwise, you could very easily adjust the sizes through document setup. But before that, I think I'll just like briefly run through the workspace. Um, so if you never opened this before, yours might look very different from mine. Um, but one way to figure out what you're using and what type of workspace you have, um, Adobe has like a preset workspace on top. So if you click this on the very top, if you can see in my top right, you can click and there's like different workspace preset setups that you can use. So for example, I'm under essential classic, um, but if you say you want to do like a painting or using Illustrator for paintings, you press painting, they would set up in a way that is helpful for all the useful tools for painting. So the different color guides, swatches, color, um, and yeah, all the more important things for the specifics that you need. Um, and then, yeah, there's others that you can use, but I think, yeah, for design, for, for what we need for uni, I think Essential Classic is good. Um, so you want to click that and you probably get something similar. Um, you can also create your own workspace. So all these things can be maneuvered and moved around. So you can drag one out. Say if you never use this in your life, you can drag it out. You can like cross it on top. Um, and you, if you want certain things, you can slot them into the sidebar here. Um, this is how I lay out. I like to have my layers at the bottom here so I can always see what layers I'm on. And then for property, um, I like to put them on top just to see like the, the different properties that I'm working with. If you don't have layers, um, you can click on windows and there's like a whole lot of tools that you can use from the side. So there's the line, appearances, artboard and whatnot. So say if you want like, um, I don't know, stroke. But the thing is I have stroke at the side, so that's not new. Um, so like I said, if you don't have layers, that's important. You can go here and you, under windows and then press layers. That will pop up and you can move it around. If you like it on the top, you can move it to the top and then appear here. Um, I'm used to the bottom, so I'll go back there. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that is your layout and reorganizing it. Important tool is maybe the rulers. So right now I don't have any rulers on top, but if you press windows, sorry, if you press view and you go down to rulers and you show rulers, then this rulers will appear. And I think that's important because sometimes you want to do documentation uh, and measurements that is important to see where everything lines up. Um, Can I also add that yeah. as you get more used to working with Illustrator and once you want to work at a very efficient speed, if you, Alicia, if you can click back to the um, rulers option. Yeah, if you go, if you see there, there'll always be a um, shortcut next, written next to it, such as Control R. So if you just want to try Control R, are you sure? Yeah. So Control R or Command R for Windows. Yeah. You can see it just pop up. In the top. Awesome. Yeah. 
So it's uh yeah, I think it's the matter of like thanks, Crystal. <laughs> it's the matter of like getting used to the software and learning all the um shortcuts to make it very efficient for you. So just now, if you try just playing around, Control R or Command R, um, you know it will appear, disappear, and and it's very quick for you. Um, and yeah, those are rulers. You can change the units by right clicking the rulers. So if you just right click where your rulers are, you get like the um, units. Millimeters is normally what we work with, so we'll stick with that. And um, yeah, so that's setting up your document. Um, if you were to add like a new document page, if you needed like another artboard to the site, on top here is just um, document setup. You can create and edit a new artboard. So this is your first artboard, and then you can do another one if you need it. Um, but for now, we don't need that. So you can just, um, you don't need that, so you can delete that. Um, and then to go back to not to not the editing side of things, you just press escape, and then it will just bring you back. So now I think I'll just show you like the shortcuts, the very quick shortcuts. Um, cursor, your selection tool is probably the most important thing. That's where you can select things. Um, oh, this is not in color. Let me. Yeah, you can quickly select things and uh, move things around. So that's where that's the one you probably want to remember quite often, which is just V. When you hover over a tool, it shows like the name and also the shortcuts. So V is to select, and you get the selection tool. So that's good to know. How to navigate yourself through the the software is that um, so to zoom in and out, you would press Alt, and your mouse. Scroll, just scroll to zoom in and out. V is to move items on um, the screen. So just say you had like a lot of drawings, you would use the selection tool. You can slowly move things around. So that is mostly, it's the most important in the sense that you use that to control, to select certain objects, um, to move objects and you can expand and close objects, expand or like resize objects. So that is like, your basic cursor, your basic tool. So that's V. Um, control V is pasting. So if you know how to use like on um, words, when you when you co copy paste things, that's is control C, control V, or command C, con command V for uh, Mac users. Um, that is for copy pasting. So if I were to take this square and I, this rectangle and I wanted to copy it, I would do control C. And then control V is for pasting. Yeah. Um, but your moving tool, which is your selection tool, that would be just V. So you just press V on your keyboard. And then that would directly bring you there. To zoom in and out is just Alt. And then your mouse wheel. And then to, to pan around, um, I usually just use my trackpad if you have one. And you would just move around like this, like just scroll on your trackpad. But if you don't have it, um, space bar brings out the paneling tool. You see like the arm and that's where you can pan around. And, and yeah, so say if you're like zooming into something and you have something here, but then you want to see something here, um, either use your trackpad to move or you can zoom out and zoom in. Or you can press space bar and then navigate yourself around the page. Yeah, as simple as that. Um, now, the most important thing um, is saving. So if you just control S, obviously, um, like every other um, software like Word, uh, Microsoft Word and Excel and whatnot, that's also control S. And you just want to name something that is obvious. So just, I don't know, Illustrator, Workshop, and um, Adobe Illustrator is the file type that you can save it as other things like PDFs or um, uh, the rest we don't really use too much, maybe SVG, but that's not too important. Just save it in the correct folder. Most important thing, you hear it from me now, um, is either you learn now or like 
you will you will probably learn the consequences along the way when things crash and then you don't save and then you lose your files. So um important to save. That's control S. Um yeah, that should be all for the very basics. Um if I haven't said already, the tools are all here. Here are the colors. So this is the fill, this is the stroke. Um, if you use this swap button, it just changes the outline to the outline color to the fill color. So right now it's like a black fill and then no stroke. Um, but if you swap them, then it just it's helpful sometimes. Um, if you have like an outline and then you want to swap it to your fill. Um, and then if you double click your fill, it will bring out like a color picker. This is where you go ham and you can pick all the colors. Um, you can slowly navigate yourself around here. You can like change the colors here and move around and see the different colors you have. Um, there's also the hex code at the bottom. That is if for some reason you know a certain code um, and you want that specific color, um, you can key in the hex code. Or else you can use the eyedropper tool, which I will teach you later. But yeah, this will be helpful. And then, so you click the object, double click here, and then you choose a, a color you like, and there you go. Then you get the fill. Um, there are different, there's like default here. So if you just default press this, you get like a white fill and a black outline. So I'll have to click the object and then press. Then you get like a white fill and um, outline. And then at the bottom here, there's just the common things like um, common colors, like none. Sometimes you don't really want to fill, just press none. Um, you've got gradients, which I can go into later. And, and yeah, <clears throat> so um, that should be it for that. Next would be layers. Um, you will get, so under layers here, you can add layers. This is very important when you're working through like your assignment, you wanna be very um, organized with your layers. So you can add layers, you can delete layers, you can rename them. So if you double tap where the words are, it comes up. Um, now we've got nothing, so I'll just name layer. If you double click like where the words are there, another tab will pop up. It's the option, the layer options. You can rename it here as well. Um, you can also change the color for that layer. So if you see each layer has like a specific color. So um you can it, it's good in in a way that you see if I color if I click this you see it's red and you know it's like here. Um, the other way to know what layer it's on is also that if you just click it will show like that red. The selected work is on that layer, so you know. Um, and yeah, and layers just work like stacking things on top of each other. So say if you it's quite basic. Um, so say if you got this on the bottom layer and you got like another thing on top. Let me say I want it in black. <clears throat> um, you, if you, if the layer at the bottom will be hidden by the layer on the top. So just the basics. If you were to move it up, then obviously the top layer will cover the bottom layer. So, okay. That is the very, very fundamental stuff. What we're going to do next is probably do the logo together. And then through that, you can learn like all the different tools um, and pull, learn how to like use them and make them handy for you. Pull up the folder that we asked you to download, the asset folder. And what you want to do is you want to drag in the image. I don't think you can see my screen, but yes. You can take your folder, drag in the image just to import the image. So it's like super simple. Um, the other way of importing an image would just be file, and then you can go um, import, I think, or place. Yeah, and then you can like find your folder and place it in. 
So this is a good time to like name your layer so you know this is like an image. I would just put at the rename it to image or like background image. Um, but this is what we're gonna work with today. It's what we're gonna like just trace over. Um, it's just a random image, but I think it would help with the different tools that we're gonna use, like the pen tool and the shape tool, and then text at the bottom. Um, we can slowly work around with that, and then we can learn to like color in things. Um, and yeah, just the most efficient way for you to use the software. Um, oh, I forgot about layering about the layers. You can lock layers, so now I can move it if it's unlocked. If I press this, it should lock, and you can't move the image anymore. Um, you can hide images. You can hide the layer. So now if I toggle this, it disappears. And yeah, and it's useful if you have like a lot of layers and you want to hide a specific layer um, just out, out of, like if you don't want to see the layer for now. So what you want to do is probably lock it so that we can trace over it. We're just going to trace this today. And then, yeah, the goal is to get this logo out for today. Okay. I think, yeah, that's good. Um, oh, yes, I wanted to say. So unlock it now. You can click the image. There's like appearances up here. Um, for now, I'm not sure why my stroke is red, but I don't want that. So then you just, you can just change it here or you can change it at your left-hand side here. What I want to do is reduce the opacity so that if I'm working with a black line to trace, um, I don't get confused what is my drawing and what is the image that we've placed. So you can adjust the opacity. I'd say like, Honestly, it's up to your preference. I'll just put like a 20. And then now it's like really faint. So you can easily trace on top, like a tracing paper. And then I'll lock it. Then I'll pop up the next layer. Make sure um, you're on the next layer. You will see like a blue highlight over it. And then what the very first thing I'm going to teach is probably to use, to draw like this window shape arc here. There's a few ways of going. Like I said, um, Illustrator and the other Adobe software is quite comprehensive in the sense that there's a million and one way to do a certain thing. Um, and there's no right or wrong. So what I'll teach you is like some, of, some, some ways of doing it. And um, most of the things that I do today is like how I work and how I use it during uni and to do my assignments. But obviously you find what works for you and um, along the way, you will learn like how to uh, make things work for you. And so one way obviously is the pen tool. That is probably the most common one. So if you click on it, you can draw and shape appears. And you can close it and it becomes a single object. Um, the short key for pen is P. So it makes sense like pen, P. You just press P, it appears, and you can draw. Um, you can swap outline like what we did just now, and then you get like a full image. But that's for curves. If to make a curve, um, okay, if you were to just click, it would be square. It would be, I mean, straight. Um, but to make curves like this, you are just to hold and then drag. And then you can curve around. I'll go into full, like a more in depth later on, like how to use the pen tool. Um, but for now, that's how you do it. So P, shortcut to pen. And then you can draw. See if you don't want to close it, you just enter, and then it becomes like a single line. Um, and then, like I said, the short keys are quite important. So I, I naturally move along and I forget to tell you, but like P is just pen, right? Um, I would naturally go back to V 
and like bring back my direct my tool, my selection tool, because say if I draw something and then I just want to select it, I can just press V and then I can move it around. So you want to like work in the way that works for you. Um, that's why short keys is quite important, like the hot keys and the shortcuts. So with that pen tool, um, you could just draw on top like this. So to make sure it's a straight line, you can see now you are like, you can draw at any angle, but if you want a straight line and not just estimate like this, um, you can press shift. And what shift does it, it locks it to a 90 degree angle, 45 degree, and yeah, all the orthogonal um, angles. So just your, your 180 and like, yeah, it's more like fixed. So you can just hold shift and then it creates a straight line and you click. And even for up, you can just shift, click. Um, and then the thing about pen tool is probably making curves look nice. That's why I say this is one way to do it, but it's probably not the way I recommend. Because if you were to hold, say, you just hold down and you draw on top, you could do that, but I don't think it will give you the nicest, the nicest curve. Um, I can show you. And you see, like, it's not the nicest. You can definitely work and try to adjust it. If you, um, I'll show you just like the basic pen tools. If you press P again, pen, um, you see that there's a plus when you hover over a line. The thing, yeah. Now you can see, usually it'll be an asterisk. So that's when you can draw. But if you hover your pen tool over a line, um, it will usually show the plus sign. And that's where you can add um, anchor points. And what, and you can, and if you hover over an anchor point, it, sh it shows like the minus. And then you can get rid of anchor points. And what anchor points essentially are, are just, if you hover over here and you right click, you see there's pen tool, there's the add anchor points, delete anchor points, and the anchor point tool. So if you press the anchor point tool, you can adjust them and like really, you can work with them and reshape the curves in the way that fits. Um, so say if I have, I have my anchor point tool on now, which is shift C, you can like readjust the curves like this. And then here you will see that there's like the handles at the sides. You can like play around and work with it. Yeah. And then so just now, for example, if I were to add like an anchor point here, that would just mean that I have more space to um, you know, to like move this around. If I add another anchor point here, then I can move this around. So it just gives you more control of your curve. Um, but yeah, you can do that. That's one way of using it, which is the pen tool. You get like somewhat of a nice curve, but you see that it's like very straight edge at the side. So it's not the nicest. Another way of doing it is using shapes. So if you go up here, this is all your shapes. You right click it, you'll drag out different type of tools that you can use. So there's rectangular tool, rectangle tool, and um, eclipse and whatnot. So for now, you use rectangle and it's M. And you can just draw on top of this. I would just draw something like this for now. So if you just drag, it would create the shape for you. Hopefully that's not too hard to understand. Um, right click again, you get the eclipse tool because this is a semicircle, right? I, you, 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 you can tell when you look at it. So I'll just draw like a circle and then put it, smack, smack it on top like this. And then you can readjust the shape to make it fit into here. And then, yeah, so now you have an intersection of a rectangle and a circle on top. Um, there's a few ways to go about this, like, um, like we said just now. One way is to use the direct selection tool. So if you hover over again to your left, you see that there's um, 
Oh, sorry, not direct solution. Your shape builder, shape builder too. You shift M. Is this circle, circle, and like an arrow thing? Just click it. What you can do, oh, you need, you need to select the shape first. Select the shape, use the shape builder tool, and say, because you, you want just the arc, and you want this whole shape, you can just drag your mouse across and hold and to the shapes that you need, and then you let go. And, and then you have it like the shape that you need, because in a separate, what it does is it trims out the shape for you. So now you have the whole arc, window arc thingy. Yeah, so you just delete and then you get the shape. So then it's like a perfect shape, arc shape. I'll show another way and hopefully it will be a, um, another way that you might find more helpful. Um, so now I will, the, the most important thing is to duplicate the next time you do things. So one way to copy things to the side is pressing out. And you, you hover over the object, you see that this, your cursor changes into like two arrows, one black and one um, black outline. That's when you can drag it to the side and then it becomes another object. So that's how you duplicate things. Um, so just now, if I were to go back to my circle and my rectangle, I would just duplicate one at the side. Um, I, I will just show one more time the shape builder. Press the shape builder, just drag across the shape that you want. It will trim out the, those that you didn't color in, and then it becomes the shape. Another way to do it is um, probably not probably not as efficient as this, but you could press the rectangle, C on your keyboard, the letter C. Um, that's for scissors. You could cut where it intersects. So you see, if you don't have this pink line, by the way, um, this pink line that shows up here, that's your smart guide. And I think that's the most important because like, it shows you where it intersects. It shows you the middle of the circle. Um, and if say you have like two lines and you want this line to be like in the middle, it shows you the pink line. And how to get that is view and smart guides. You always want that on. If not, you cannot, um, it's hard to like navigate your way around the shapes. So using the scissor tool again, C, and clicking the image, you click your image first, press C for scissors. Where it intersects, you can cut. <clears throat> and same goes to the other side. And then you see how it cuts into two different shapes. You can delete the top. And then you can do the same for the circle. You click the circle, press C. You can cut where it intersects here and here. And it becomes two shape as well, the bottom and the top. You can delete the bottom and then it becomes this shape. But now the thing is it will appear as two shapes. Um, what you can do is select both of them, just highlight across like this. You can right click and there should be join and then it becomes one whole shape. So now it, that's two ways, three ways, um, but you see how pen tool is not the nicest. So I would usually go for this. There's, so this is two ways to make a shape like this. So, so far you've learned the shape builder tool. Um, and I'll give you another example where like, say you have a lot of circles and you just want like the intersection the shape builder is helpful to pick the intersections that you have, but you need to make sure you need to highlight everything, shape builder, and you can get like the intersections cut out. So now you, you see, like, everything's cut out nicely for you. So that's very helpful. Okay, now um, I just want, so the inner line here is the same as the outer. So what I'll do is I'll drag it across here and then I can resize it to fit into this the same sketch here. Um, to resize images, if you press shift and you drag, you maintain the shapes um, height, I mean the shapes proportion. Um, because if you don't, then it will go wonky like this. Um, but if you press shift, it maintains the shape. 
in this resizes. So you can use that to resize things and it's very helpful because sometimes you want things to be in the same proportion, just smaller, then you press shift. So yeah, you're done with the arc, easy. Um, the window shape thing, I'll delete this. And I'll rename this layer to, I don't know, window. So now we'll draw the sun. Circle, um, to get your circle, right click, eclipse tool. Um, shift again to make sure it's a perfect circle. If not, it would just go out of portion, out proportion. And you can shift, make the tool, press V to go back to your selection tool, and you can move it to the sun. Easy. Now, um, your pen tool, which is P, you can draw out this rays. Um, there's a few ways to do it. You can just pen tool, draw, and then enter. Um, enter, <coughs> draw, and enter. You could also duplicate like just now. So if you just copy, if you press your direct selection tool again, I mean, your selection tool, V, you can Alt to copy this. That's to duplicate. And you can draw your rays again. So Alt, move it. Enter, draw, and enter. And you have the rays. And then I'll rename the layer sun. So the reason um, why I'm layering it that way is that, say, if I don't want the sun suddenly, I can just hide the layer and the sun will just, the whole sun will disappear, you know? So it's quite useful. If I don't want a window, I can just hide the whole window. So layering is very important. See if I draw on the sun layer, um, something random, like just this shape, right? And say I don't want, I want this to be in the windows layer. What you do is you select it, you go to the layer that you want it to be in. So say I want this circle to be in the Windows layer. You can click it. And then you go to your, um, your object, right click, and you will find a range. And under a range, you have send to current layer. And then now you see the, the green highlight became a red highlight and it's under Windows now. That's another way to do it. So if you select your object, you see this green box, um, and then you just drag it, and then it changes to the correct layer. So that's pen tool, shape tool. What we can do next is um, the mountains. So I think we can quickly go through this because it's quite simple. Create a new layer, name it mountain. And then you can start drawing. So use your pen tool again. You can draw the mountains out, press enter. And for this instance, um, you see how like there's an intersection and I want to draw, I want to intersect these lines. But when I hover over this, the plus sign appears like what it's supposed to do, like adding the anchor points. What you can do is press shift. It changes the plus sign to an asterisk you can see. So now if I hover over this, it's a plus sign, press shift, it becomes enter, and you can intersect um, your lines. And then you can continue drawing, enter, press shift to intersect. Oh, oh press shift, yep. And then the pen tool, da, da, da. Yeah, 
And then um, this thing is where you can use the curve pen tool, which is quite fun. You can just uh, hold to build the curve. You can adjust how you want the curve to be like this. Just slowly move around. And you can do that. Say if you want it to be more curved, you can draw and you want here to be curved, you can hold to bring up the curve, hold to bring up the curve. Hopefully that's not too confusing, the pen tool. Um, you should be quite familiar by now, or like if you've been drawing straight lines and curved lines, but obviously it comes with practice. And now instead of drawing another one, I would probably just press Alt and then copy one to the side and copy another one to the side. And then you can reshape it. And then using the scissors tool like I taught just now, you can just click the image using your selection tool, cut, and you can cut. And now this thing becomes like a separate object. It can be neat. Um, just cut and delete. Yeah. And then save your work. Remember to save it. Control or Command S. Okay, yeah. That's the mountains. Completely run through. Now for the A frame, um, the triangle. I'll just call it an A frame. The funny thing about um Illustrator is that they don't have like a triangle shape. But what they do have is that they have a star tool. If you were to draw that out, you get this star, right? But you, and the star, and this star has like, I don't know, one, two, three, five points. Um, but you only want, you want a triangle. So you can use the star tool to draw out a triangle. So what you do is you drag it out before you let go. So while it's still like on your control to resize it, your up and down key, your arrow keys, on your keyboard, the up key creates more points. The down key creates less points. So just now we had this. If you keep going down, it will become a triangle. So that's for the points. So now you can drag it, resize it. Remember shift to keep the proportions. And then move it to your shape. And then for the inner shape, just duplicate. And then you can duplicate using out. And then you can reshape it to size. There you go. Um, yeah, so that's with the star tool. I think it's quite, it's quite interesting that they made it that way, but, um, but it is quite fun to at and minus points of a triangle. But yeah, that's the A-frame. Um, quickly, we can go through all the windows, so the circles, rectangles. And then using your rectangle. Um, yeah, also the habit of like, duplicating to make sure that these two windows are actually the same size. You can just copy paste. You can copy and paste for the door as well. And then using out. Um, and then you can drag down. And then for these lines, I would just use your pen tool. Enter. Pen tool shift to keep the shape, to keep the angles. Enter. And then for the trees, um, I think there's a million and one ways to do it. I would just use the pen tool as well. Oh, okay. You see how like I'm on the sun layer now and I just realized and I want that to be on a separate tree layer. I'll just create a tree layer. And then like what Angela taught just now, you could just drag it on top. And then now it's in the tree layer or you can rearrange it using that. Um, and then for these, I'll just 
draw like this and then duplicate it. To make sure like, you know, um, if you duplicate, press out and duplicate, right? Like sometimes it goes, it's not in the same alignment that you want. You can just press out and you can press shift. So that locks it to the same alignment. So that's either uh, X or Y like this. So like this, and you can keep duplicating. You can duplicate more than one item, like four items even. And then get your tree. And now you can group it. So what you do is you highlight the things that you want because now it's all single items, right? Like I can move individually. I want to group it. So what I'll do is highlight what I want it to be in the group in, control or command G, and it groups. Another way is to right click and press group. And then now you will see that they are all in one group and I can move them together. If you want to edit within the group, just double click the elements that are in the group. So say I want to edit, edit this thing, double click. It will pop, you, this thing will pop up. So you see tree, which is the layer it's in, and then group, which is you isolated the group basically. Um, and then you can adjust within the group. You can still move it individually, but once you exit from here, um, say if I move this down, and if I exit from here, pressing this, um, it becomes a group again, and with the adjustments that I've made. Is there a question? Okay. Um, okay, now I just want to duplicate, copy over, and this is the tree. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'll draw one last line for the ground. And yeah. Now for coloring. The issue about coloring is that, say, if, if I click this image, this curve, and I color it like, I don't know, pink, it colors the entire shape. Um, but sometimes you just want to color the ground and not the sky, but then you don't have like a specific shape for it. What you can do is use live bucket tool. So what, um, what you're going to do is you highlight everything. You go to your where your shape builder tool is, right click for live bucket. I mean, right click shape builder tool, and there's live bucket here. And the shortcut is K. So I'll just press K and then it brings me to live bucket. Um, oh, before, before that, sorry, sorry, I forgot. Before that, you have to select the image. You go to object. So in order for you to use the live bucket tool, you always have to go through this you need to make the object a live paint. So if you go to, you select the whole object that you want, select object, and you go under live paint, and you make. So now this whole object is able for you to use the live bucket tool. Um, but what it does, it merges, the, the unfortunate thing is it merges all your objects into one layer. So now you see everything is under tree which I don't like. Um, I, I want them to be in like separate layers still. So what I'll do is I'll undo it. Undo is control Z by the way. Um, make it not live too. Okay. I'll just cop make a copy to the side. And then I'll create a new layer and I'll call that like a copy. And then I'll put that into the layer. And now I'll, I'll lock it and I'll hide it. So now I cannot see it, but you still have. Oh, wait, sorry. You want to hide everything except the copy. So you can hide the trees, you hide the A-frame, the mountains, the sun, the window, and then you bring out the copy. Um, and you can put that to the middle. And you select everything, go. Same thing, so you want to make it a live paint, live paint, make. And so now you can press K, which is live bucket tool, and you can color it in. Um, so now that's the fun part, that's coloring it in. You press the fill, say I want the sky to be blue. 
and then you can color it in. If you drag, you can select a few of the, you can select different areas and you can let go and colors the entire selection that you've made. So yeah, so now you can color the sky separately. Say you want the ground to be like green, okay, mountains to be green. You can play around, select, okay, green. I want the back to be a darker green. And then just very simple. Um, say I want the A-frame to be like red. So I'll do this and then press K. And I get like, you can color in everything basically. Yeah, so that's like your own design preferences and your own creative mind. Let it flow and let it do whatever it wants. Um, okay, that's live bucket too. That's that's live paint and that's how you color. But say I want the sun to be yellow. Press K and then do, or live paint bucket and you color in. And now I'll do fonts. So say cottage here. Make a new layer. Um, font or word or title and you can press T for type or you can press type 2 at the side here if you click once you get like uh, your typing area so I'm just going to be a bit uncreative and write cottage or you can write your own name or whatever um, just to copy the image you can highlight it and then it's like every Word document or, or PowerPoint presentation, whatever. Um, you can change the fonts. And you can change the thickness, thin, light, italic, bold, black. Change the sizes. Like maybe a 30. Change all this. Okay, that one should be quite normal to you. Also, now is a good time to like hide the image at the back, the trees, because I don't need it anymore. This is where like you do it your own way. Um, for type, you can do a lot of things. I won't go too much into details just because um, of time. And also, you can learn it in your own time. But for now, say if I type cottage and I want it to follow a certain curve, you can do that too. Um, see if I drew this. Right, and then through this line, and I want this word to, and I want like the word to follow this curve. What you can do is press T or type, you hover around and your cursor will change into this text with a little curve at the bottom. And if you press that, then your words will follow the line. So it's useful if um, you have like a circle maybe, and then you want your type to like fit into the circle, you can do that. Or, um, or you can press this. There's, there's a whole diff a lot of ways to do it. You can go like op um, type. Oh, wait. You can, oh wait, actually there's a lot. Like there's just so many ways to do it that I'm like, I'm thinking which one is the easiest. But I think, okay, all I'll teach you is um, say if you want to curve this or arc it maybe to go over this arc, you can press cottage, object, um, envelope distort, and then you can make warp. And then this warp option appears and you can adjust the bend. Make sure your preview is on so you can preview when you change, make changes. So you can make it super curved or you can make it the opposite direction or not too curved if you don't like it to be too curved. Um, there's other options like lower, upper, arc, bulge, you know, like fish eye um, and all that. And that's for you to play around. But see, for now, I, I don't want anything. Um, and I just want it to be like this word on top at the bottom here. Um, in, if you... If you're, con if you're very sure about your type, like say you are done, you know this is the way you want it to be, you can make, because now this is clearly a type, like you can change the text and whatnot. Um, but if you want to make an object where you can change the colors instead of like, you could change the colors over here. Oh, wait, you can't. 
Yeah. Say if you want to change, oh, you can change the colors here. Like, say if you want pink, it becomes pink. But say if you want to like play more of it, what you can do is double click the text. No, sorry. Bring up your selection tool, click the text, right click, and it will bring out this um, options and you can press create outline. So now it becomes an object instead of a text. And if you ungroup it, because now it's in a group, if you ungroup it, right click ungroup, they become individual. So this is very useful if like, say you wanna adjust the C and make it super big so that it fits around here. Or if you want these two T's to stick together, and then now it's more than just a normal text and you can treat it like a, like a sheep. Um, another thing is, so that's for text, the very, very basic for text. See if I just want to outline this, shift it. And I want to like combine these two shapes together instead, because clearly these are two different shapes, right? You want to combine them. What you can do is this thing at the side here, it's called, uh, oh, it's called this Pathfinder. If you don't have it at the side here, you can go to Windows and it should be Pathfinders here. It's very useful um, to union stuff and combine things. So for example, if I press unite, it becomes one whole object instead of two objects. Um, and then there's other things. So I can show you an example. Um, so now I want to unite this, press this, unite, and then it becomes like a com single object. If I have like different circles, this, <clears throat> if I want to unite all of them, Highlight everything, press Unite. It combines and takes the outline of everything. There's also like minus font. It would take um, the very first shape and it would cut out the second and third shape and create the final, like create one shape like this. There's also intersection. Um, I don't use that too much, so I'm not too sure like how you can do that. But I think you have to intersect. Like, yeah. If you intersect three things together, you want this like solid point where all three of the intersects, you can intersect it like this. Oh, sorry. And then there's other tools like uh, exclude. I don't even know what exclude this. Or exclude just includes everything together and creates a single object without cutting or trimming anything. And there's others, you can just play along and find out what each of them do. But for now, that's that. Um, so now, yeah, you kind of, you have the words, you have the fonts, you have the image and learn, you learn how to color them. You learn the pen tool. Um, you learn how to um, use the shapes, the stars to create the triangle. So it's all literally the basics. Um, one more thing is the most important, one of the important things that I like to use is eyedropper tool. So if you go to the site, you see eyedropper. Um, it's basically just to pick certain colors. It, it, the short key is I, and it brings up this weird thing. Um, and what you want to do is, that's why I've included like a color palette in the folder that I sent you all. Um, if you can see this, drop it down. And like, I just want to put this to the side. Press V to make a selection tool. And then highlight. And then you can move it around. So this is now your color palette. So this is useful in the future. If you like want a specific color, you can import an image into it. And then you can put it in a layer, say um, color palette. Oh, I spelled it wrong. And then move it to this layer. And now it's here. Um, you can lock it. And what the eyedropper tool, so it's eye on your keyboard or here, eyedropper. You can select the colors within the color palette. So you see how like here it changes to the specific colors that you eyedrop. So that's useful when you're on the color. So K for to color this again, the live bucket. 
life pain bucket. Say I want the sky to be this specific blue. I can press I, I drop it, K to paint it again. And you can you get this very specific colors. And then I want the house to be this pink. The eye drop again, press K. And then you can color in. You can even make your own color palette, say if you want like three shades of green that are just a bit darker than each other. Duplicate, and then this side. Say I want like a darker pink for shadow, just double click, make a darker one, and an even darker one than this. Double click, go. Yeah. So you can create your own color palettes and you can like eye drop base on these as well. K to paint, eye drop, K to paint, and you can, and so, and so on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and basically that's the very, very basics. Uh, hopefully you came up with something like this um, with your own creative mind and your own colors. I think that will be the um, end of the workshop. I think I'll just post the link for the feedback form in the chat and um, please do fill that in to, for us to improve our workshop in the future. So we're going to have um, workshops for Photoshop in design in the following week. So as a part of our um, Adobe series, thank you, Alicia, for being the instructor today.